we're going to be looking at producing this green hydrogen to, for the decarbonization of local industries, but at the same time, recover these useful byproducts that we can use, for example, for the oxygen, for the uh, augmenting or supplying additional oxygen to the aeration systems of the biological reactors. Uh, by co-valorizing these byproducts, we can save between 12 to 17 percent on the uh, overall hydrogen production by again integrating these two systems together. Hi, I'm Jeremy Wolf. Talking with me today is Sam Reichschneider, a wastewater R&D technologist with Corolo. Uh, we're talking about green hydrogen production and what it means for wastewater treatment facilities. Sam, thank you for talking with me today. Yeah, nice meeting you, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, so just uh, the gist is basically what we're kind of trying to do in uh, uh, working with the city of St. Cloud, Minnesota. Uh, we're looking into installing a one megawatt demonstration electrolyzer system uh, to basically produce on-site green hydrogen production and potentially co-valorize some of the byproducts, which are mostly uh, what we call green uh, oxygen and also the heat that is emitted by the electrolysis system. And so what, what does it mean to produce green hydrogen in this environment? It's not uh, biological, is it? No, so in this case, uh, the green hydrogen is not produced biologically uh, through an anaerobic process. In this case, the green hydrogen is basically produced electrochemically. Uh, what we're kind of talking about in these terms is we actually feed renewable energy uh, in terms of electricity to the electrolyzer, which literally it's a system that splits the water to its basic raw component, which are hydrogen, which typically gets reused for a specific decarbonization purpose, and then oxygen, which is typically just vented to the atmosphere. Uh, in our type of application, again, we're gonna be looking at producing this green hydrogen to, for the decarbonization of local industries, but at the same time, recover these useful byproducts that we can use, for example, for the oxygen, for the uh, augmenting or supplying additional oxygen to the aeration systems of the biological reactors. And then the heating then can be used to kind of pre, uh, kind of heat a little bit, some of the feed that goes into the digesters or for building heating as well. And do we have any idea of what sort of cost savings a wastewater utility might expect by using this byproduct oxygen for their aeration or other processes? Yeah, absolutely. So it kind of depends, again, the first and foremost thing that I say to anybody that is interested in maybe pursuing green hydrogen production on site is you need to have a local market for hydrogen. Otherwise, the economics of the process uh, make it hard to justify the expense. Um, what basically, what we can look into savings if, again, we have that local need for hydrogen is that we can actually use that oxygen uh, to kind of lower the aeration costs, because the aeration, as uh, a lot of us know, that kind of work, at least in the wastewater field, uh, is one of the major energy consumers. And so by lowering that oxygen demand, we lower the amount of aeration that needs to be provided, and thus we can save on those costs. Uh, what I can give you in terms of numbers is, uh, electrolyzer, like if electrolyzer process is, let's say, X amount of energy demand, uh, by co-valorizing these byproducts, we can save between, and this is for the same cloud case, it can vary case to case, but we can save between like 12 to 17% on the uh, overall hydrogen production by again integrating these two systems together. And could you tell me a bit more about your work with this and with wastewater treatment facilities? Is it at the pilot scale? Is it at a uh, full scale? What's right, so in this case, it's gonna be at a full scale. Uh, the process in is basically being, uh, it's been awarded already from the Department of Energy for this uh, project called Decarbonization of Wastewater Treatment Plants. Um, it's going to be start, like the building of the pilot will begin in 2024. Uh, right now we are at a stage where we conducted like the analysis of the feasibility of uh, utilizing these byproducts uh, in a beneficial way, again, for the overall facility. All right, fantastic. Sam, thank you so much for talking with me today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Jeremy.